Welcome again. In this session, we're reading John chapter 13, verses 18 through to 33. Jesus foretells his betrayal. Now, we just came from when Jesus was washing his disciples' feet. And so Jesus was just having like little heart-to-heart -heart talks with his disciples, with his students. This is where we pick up. Jesus continued by saying, I don't speak concerning all of you. I know whom I have chosen. Now, for those of you who know the story and know the context, Jesus is about to be talking about Judas here. Now, it sounds like in this, by the way he talks, that he chose the 11, but he didn't choose that Judas, Yehuda. He didn't choose him. Could it be that Judas was not really called by Jesus, he just came along, and he wasn't authentically called by Jesus to be Jesus' disciple. And that, you know, he says, I know whom I have chosen, implying that there is at least somebody here that was not chosen by Yeshua, not chosen by Jesus to be his disciple. But that the scripture may be fulfilled. He who eats bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. Now, this is found in Psalm 41, verse 9. From now on, I tell you before it happens, that when it happens, you may believe that I am he. Speaking about the Messiah. Most certainly, I tell you, he who receives whomever I send receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. That's a good thing to, to know. Uh, and that's a good thing to keep in, in your mind. Because when you have somebody, even in this day and in this age, we got to keep in mind, Jesus is still alive and he still does things. I mean, he, he's not... Uh, idol in what he's doing now. He's still working in this world by his spirit, and he's still working through his people. Okay? So when somebody comes and they are preaching or they're saying something or they're teaching, you got to ask a question. Did Jesus, like the real Jesus, send this person? Now, it's kind of a hard question to answer because most people don't even know who Jesus is. And I'm talking about pastors and priests, church leaders, Sunday school teachers, doesn't matter. Evangelists, so-called prophets. A lot of people don't even really know who Jesus really is. You got to, first of all, get to know who he is. And that's what we're doing here. We're reading, we're, we are reading the scriptures. We are getting to know who Jesus really is. And, you know, again, I want to emphasize, he's not this guy who just goes around and just, you know, causes everybody to feel butterflies in their stomach. Uh, a lot of times he angers people so much so they want to kill him. I mean, extreme, extremely offensive. Jesus was and still is because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, as it says in the book of Hebrews. Jesus was and still is very offensive. So next time somebody comes to your church or stands out on the street corner or anywhere and they are saying things or doing things that are very offensive to people, you got to really stand back for a minute and say, is this like Jesus? Is this like Jesus? You know, Jesus said in John chapter 7, verse 7, the world hates me because I testify that his deeds are evil. Most so-called Christians today don't do that. Most preachers, ministers, pastors, priests today don't do that. They don't testify that anybody's deeds are evil. But that is what Jesus did, and that is what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to take Jesus' example. My point is this, there are a lot of people who have been rejected, especially by those who believe that they're Christians and especially by church leaders. These church leaders and these Christians may or may not realize, probably not, 
that they are rejecting Jesus himself. They think that they're, you know, just getting rid of this offensive guy, this guy who's too rough around the edges, this guy who's not doctrinally sound, who doesn't, you know, doesn't follow the doctrine of the church. Pastor, you've got to ask yourself a question. Does your doctrine really follow the scriptures? Really? I mean, really? Not a doctrine that picks and chooses scriptures and you know, chooses to ignore this scripture and, and, and to accept this one. Chooses to ignore this verse and to accept that one. Chooses to ignore this book and accepts that one. you got to start looking at things in a different way. And once you do, you will grow. You will grow exceedingly. Verse 21, when Jesus had said this, he was troubled in spirit and testified, most certainly I tell you that one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another perplexed about, about whom he spoke. One of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, was at the table, leaning against Jesus' breast. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him and said to him, tell us who it is of whom he speaks. Now, it's commonly believed, traditionally believed, that this person whom Jesus loves is John. And I believe that as well. Uh, John, in this book, I mean, this book alone, you see how much more meaty this book is compared to the other Gospels. Same with the epistles of John, okay? The epistles of John speak of things that Paul never speaks about, you know? Like, he who sins is of the devil. These kind of things that John talks about, I mean, he doesn't mince his words at all. He is strong against sin. He preaches obedience and righteousness in a way that a lot of the other disciples don't. So, I, I mean, it's very obvious here that John was a very special disciple. Verse 25, he, leaning back, as he was on Jesus' breast, asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus therefore answered, It is he to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it. Now, what you need to understand here is that a lot of the different translations say bread here, okay? Uh, in the original Greek manuscripts, in the original manuscripts, it's not bread, it doesn't say literally matzah or matzo, okay? The original Greek word here is somion, which is literally, it means a fragment, a bit, or a morsel. It doesn't say literally a piece of bread, okay? So um, we need to make this clear, okay? And because of the way Jesus talks here, he talks about taking a fragment or a bit of something and dipping it in a dish, because of the way he talks and because of the way he talked in other gospels, and we already dealt with that, so uh, I encourage you to go back and listen to them if you haven't listened to them already. But because of these things, I believe that Jesus was eating the Passover meal, okay? The fragment, the bit that he dipped was, it's the same thing as how Jews do today when they, when they celebrate Pesach, when they celebrate Passover. I mean, they dip their herbs in a dish. So this is even more evidence that what Jesus is doing here is literally doing the Pesach meal, okay? May I add, if you're a Christian and you profess to be a follower of Christ, you are supposed to be Christ-like. Being Christ-like means obeying all of the feasts, okay? Obeying the feasts of the Lord, which means celebrating Pesach not celebrating the Easter bunny or Easter eggs, okay? Celebrating Pesach, okay? That is biblical. Easter eggs, Easter bunny is not. So let's continue here. It says, so when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, Yehuda, the son of Simon Iscariot. After the piece of bread, then Satan entered into him. Wow, very powerful. Then Jesus said to him, what you do, do quickly. Now, nobody at the table knew why he said this to him. For some thought, because Yehuda 
had the money box that Jesus said to him, buy what things we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. Therefore, having received that morsel, he went out immediately. It was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified. Now he has been glorified. He came into Jerusalem, the triumphant entry. Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. The Son of Man has been glorified. And God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and he will glorify him immediately. Little children, I will be with you a little while longer. You will seek me. And as I said to the Jews, where I am going, you can't come. So now I tell you. So we're going to leave off at this point right now. I, I encourage you, do not miss the next teaching it is going to be very awesome. Okay, I'm just I'm just very excited thinking about this next teaching coming up. Once again, thanks for watching. And as you seek God, I pray that he gives you a spirit of revelation, that he opens the eyes of your understanding. And as you call upon him, remember, he promised you, he will show you great and mighty things. Thanks again.